know about you guys, but I definitely love Evernote. <laughs> so um, from our next uh, speech, for uh, messaging applications or media platforms, oftentimes technology is not a greatest challenge. So um, tech companies have to learn to deal with all this um, unique complexities of international market and regulations. So to share more about their uh, considerations when in China, please welcome Misha Bunnell, founder of FireChat, and uh, Matthew Allen, English content manager at Pinwest. He has an incredible story that he's here to share with us. Um, last year, Hong Kong had some social movements and his company played a very interesting role. They saw half a million downloads in one week as so many people in one place congested bandwidth and there were chatter of higher powers doing something to minimize communication. So I'd love to get right into it, sir, and uh, share with us this amazing story of technology and people and, and history. Thank you, Matt, for having me uh, here today. Uh, it's great to see so much people uh, in this room. Uh, thank you, Ping West and Trista. Uh, I was uh, already speaking in your previous events uh, last year. Um, and uh, I, uh, I was very uh, skeptical about the title and the headline of the session because I feel I am in Star Wars, but uh, I guess the force is with us, so ready to tell you this story. Uh, so my company is called Open Garden. We are, have developed a technology specialized uh, in what we call peer-to-peer -peer mesh networking. And we uh, have this vision that uh, has every one of us today has a smartphone in, uh, in your pocket. Every one of you has a smartphone. Basically, we thought it was a, a great idea to just connect these phones directly to one another to recreate uh, a network and that way enable better communications, but also communications in situations where normally we don't have any access to the internet uh, or when access to the internet is, is difficult. And uh, so we developed this technology for a few years and to show the potential of the technology, we saw uh, the best thing to do, and that was um, uh, at the end of uh, 2013, uh, would be to, to uh, market a messaging app because everyone understands messaging. So end of March last year, we launched this app called FireChat that enables you to send and receive messages even when you don't have any internet access. And uh, we thought this app would be used first uh, uh, as a demo uh, in places like uh, Burning Man, so in the middle of the desert, or during uh, large music festivals and concerts, uh, in the plane, on cruise ships. So a lot of scenarios and, uh, and use cases where normally you have no internet access. Outside lands. And so that plan gets changed, and I always like to say that um, there is the map and uh, there is the road, and uh, the map is never the road. So on the road to market this application, 10 days after the launch, uh, started to be used in uh, Taiwan when the, the government threatened to shut down access to the internet. And so all the students in Taiwan uh, installed FireChat. And uh, later uh, in the year, uh, so that was during the summer 2014, so it started to be used in countries where uh, government tried to restrict access to, uh, to social networks. And uh, more surprisingly, I was uh, in Bangalore to, um, to pitch and to, uh, to demonstrate the potential of this technology for emerging markets because we can bring connectivity in places where there is none or connectivity at a very, very low cost thanks to this technology. And on my way back, I stopped for a, a layover in uh, Hong Kong City that I love uh, before coming back to San Francisco. And during the, the first night after my stay, I, I, I look at the app on a, on a Sunday morning, uh, I think well, yeah, it was a Sunday morning, and I say, wow, it's, why, there's so much activity on the app, I don't know what's happening. So I, I look at the stats, and uh, suddenly I realize that 100,000 people in Hong Kong City had installed FireChat. And then I made quickly the link with the, the demonstration and the process that, that we're starting. And what happened is a, a student named... Uh, Joshua Wong basically uh, asked all the students to install the app because they, they thought that the government was, was going to shut down access to the internet, which never happened. And so uh, along this my stay, because I decided to stay because it was really an unusual situation, so I didn't take my flight back to San Francisco, and I spent 10 days in the city of Hong Kong. 
And during the first week, we got half a million people in Hong Kong installing the app. And if you look in history of mobile apps, it's probably the fastest adoption of a mobile app in such a short period of time, in such a, a small geography. And uh, it's also one of every 15 people in Hong Kong. So yes. one of every 15 people download this app, flooded the streets, and allowed this communication to happen. Yeah, Hong Kong is a, yeah, is a, is a city of 7 million people, you know? so it's a very high uh, penetration ratio. And uh, so we figured out that uh, I wanted to understand how people were using the app and why they were using the app. And uh, I think there were three main reasons. One, it was more like a, a symbol first, because uh, when you saw these pictures of people probably in the crowd with their hands up and their phones up uh, saying, uh, nobody is going to shut us down. Basically, we are building our own network. We, uh, well, we can communicate whatever happens. The second reason was the app was, is, it was a perfect tool to spread out information like uh, other social networks did in the past, like uh, for example with uh, Facebook or Twitter during the, the Arab Spring. But FireChat is a great tool to spread out information to really the, the largest number of people in a very uh, easy and fast way. If I can interject, the, the messages that were being sent were across all kinds of locations, but also food delivery, sanitation, cleanup, um, you know, evening study sessions, just all kinds of chat groups being formed for these people to just live on the streets of Hong Kong for weeks. Exactly. So, so they used it to organize themselves and share this information. And the third reason is uh, when you were in the Central or Admiralty in the, in the streets of Hong Kong, you had so many people, it was so crowded that all the mobile networks were completely congested. So the only way uh, for people to have a, a form of communication was to use uh, fire chat because if you were trying WeChat or WhatsApp or Facebook or Twitter, there, were, there was no signal. So impossible to have any form of communication. Uh, so people were seated, seated waiting in the streets in circles and they were sending messages through fire chat uh, through one group to another. Uh, so it was pretty amazing. I went to test myself uh, in the crowd and um, it was probably one of the most surreal experiences in my life because we got so much attention from uh, uh, the international uh, press and media that I, mean, I didn't sleep for a week, probably an hour and a half a day uh, for a week. Um, and just to give you an idea of the amount of information we had on the network, uh, so while Twitter was having 1.3 million tweets during the, the first four days of the event, and that's an official number that was released uh, on the South China Morning Post, uh, we were having on FireChat 2 million chat, chat sessions in the city on, of Hong Kong alone. And uh, in, in each chat session you have hundreds of thousands of, uh, of messages. Again, that's 1.3 million tweets and 2 million FireChat groups. Um, what were some challenges you saw as hundreds and thousands of people downloaded in such a short period of time? So we, uh, we have to re react live and uh, I mean uh, my co-founders or team here worked, worked greatly to, uh, to actually be able to handle this because it was really an accident and a crisis also for us. Uh, because suddenly you had uh, people who tried to spread out false information on the network, so how do you deal with this? Uh, so we had to roll out official accounts, uh, especially on Android. We did that in, uh, in 24 hours. So we started to verify uh, people who were uh, more official and were trusted source of information. And uh, so we had to deal with all these things basically live. We'll come back to China. I, I want to ask you about, you mentioned that we have uh, Google Project Loon. Facebook has recently launched uh, an initiative to beam internet down to rural areas. You believe that this technology is more useful to get te technology into places without infrastructure? We, we believe it's very pragmatic. It is a very pragmatic uh, technology. It's 100% software. We don't need to spend billions of dollars uh, to put satellite or drones or balloons in the sky with technologies with, which are not proven. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to see how it's going to work. Sure. And then when you look at the market of uh, uh, smartphone and the expansion of the market, today you have 1.5 billion smartphone users all over the globe. Uh, I think we have no idea of the impact uh, the smartphones are going to have on the planet because in the next three to four years you're going to have uh, four billion more smartphones. Uh, so nobody knows what's going to happen in terms of impact. Uh, I think it's great because it's going to create more wealth, uh, improve education, so it's a fantastic impact. And when you look at this market, uh, this new market, 80% of the, the smartphones are going to be shipped in emerging markets mm -hmm. and uh, most of this, uh, the people buying these smartphones will be in dense cities. So you will never have drones uh, basically fly over cities. But with this technology of peer-to-peer -peer mesh networking, uh, we can easily spread out uh, a, a network and, and have a communication forming, a communication network forming. To give you an idea, 
Um, so we just rolled out last week uh, private messaging on FireChat, and I invite you to, to test it. It's, we are still improving the product, but it's going, arriving to a very acceptable level. Uh, and uh, when we reach 5% of penetration in any dense city, even if you have uh, no internet, no coverage, and uh, this can be the case in disaster recovery situations. So for example, we uh, are more and more used in Philippines where the, they ask people to download FireChat in case of an earthquake. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we reach this 5%, we can guarantee delivery of messages within uh, the whole network uh, in less than 20 minutes. Let's, uh, excuse me, let's talk a little detail. So within 200 feet, this, the current range, the current range is, yes, 200 feet from one phone to another, but messages can hop, so it creates a daisy chain of smartphones and messages can hop from one phone to another. That's incredible. Um, we talked about communication being the first usage for this technology, and then how you envision payment or video or other types of, types of data being streamed. Um, would you talk a little bit about how you see the, the communication growing? Sure, so once we, we master uh, messaging, which is the first layer, um, just for the, we, we really want to become the first 100% uh, software uh, network and, uh, and, and carrier. Uh, so the great thing is it's a net, you, once you have uh, a lot of users, you get a network with no uh, capital expenditure basically. So you have no investment to make, it's all software. So it's a, it, we create a great value. Uh, so this network, once we master well, messaging can be used to move images, can be used for peer-to-peer -peer gaming in places when there is no local network, so for enabling people to play against one another on their smartphone. Mm. Payments, obviously, especially when you start to look at uh, all the evolutions in, uh, in fintech and uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, so yeah, it's very exciting and very promising. We believe it's the future of uh, mobile internet, and that's the best efficient way to distribute activity uh, in the coming years. You mentioned the Philippines. Since last year, where have you seen FireChat take off in, in other regions? So FireChat, the number one country is the US. Uh, India is number two. Um, and uh, Hong Kong uh, has a city or a country. I mean, it comes number three <laughs> uh, because of what happened. And, uh, but uh, for example, since we launched private messaging last year, we managed to be in the top 10 in, among all the applications in, uh, in all the countries in South America. So it's, uh, you know, it's very encouraging. And I invite you to uh, all try the app and install it because the more people join the network, the better is the connectivity for everyone. That's the, we have a, a massive network effect with this technology. I'm gonna ask you the, a hard question that you just mentioned, four or five billion more smartphones online. How does that change some of the companies here today? How does that change? What opportunities does that bring when you have six billion people connected? It's a tough question, so you're an architect, though I had to well, ask. I don't, I don't think I have the answer, uh, because we, I mean, it's new, there is no precedence. Uh, um, but what I, I can perceive is that, yeah, if you do uh, e-commerce, if, uh, if you have an e-commerce website, or if you are uh, selling to uh, consumers, you need to focus all your efforts on mobile. That's the, the best uh, thing I can, uh, I can recommend to everyone. When we first spoke, my initial assumption was that big telecoms would take this as competition. Um, but you really gave a really interesting, some interesting insight. When people get data or when people get internet for the first time, it's a sample and they want more. And that might increase sales for big telecoms. So they're not necessarily perceiving it as major direct competition. Could you elaborate on that? I, I think we have both reactions from telcos, people who uh, have like a yeah, an epidemic reaction and say, oh, no, 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 that's going to destroy our business. Uh, but, I mean, telcos have al is already a very competitive space and people are, are, are used to compete against one another and to partner. So we can partner and also bring a lot of benefits to, to telcos. We started partnerships with a few uh, mobile operators, MVNOs mainly, so they can onboard users with a first taste of the internet using FireChat and then uh, it's a better way for them to start marketing uh, their data plan, especially in emerging markets where 80% of the people who buy a smartphone uh, don't pay for data. We have a, uh, a short video that you sent us. Could you do an introduction and then we'll show a, a quick video? Uh, sure, so that's um, a video that uh, shows the power of such networks because it's uh, a, uh, a network uh, built by the people for the people and uh, that's what we wanted to, uh, to, to show in this, uh, in this short uh, video. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, sir. Should don't.
We'll get this out. She don't you want to pause that for a second? Excuse me, sir. Frontiers. Braved wild oceans. Strong cables around the earth. And then build technology to liberate ourselves from them. Now it's time to from take the, the next from the beginning, please, you know. With a free network created by people that doesn't need Thank you. food, clothing, shelter. Three of the most basic human needs. But there's a fourth. It's communication. And it's so important that we'll overcome any obstacle to achieve it. We've hammered words into stone. Written across frontiers. Braved wild oceans. Strong cables around the earth. And then built technology to liberate ourselves from them. Now it's time to take the next leap. With a free network created by people that doesn't need a signal, that can't be censored or shut down, that goes where we go. Because our right to communicate is just too important to trust to anyone else. Welcome to the Internet of Us. One more time, thank you everyone else, and uh, thank you Misha, that was great.